brought something with me. I ran this Xfinity race this past weekend. This is um, this is all this is word for word every piece, every comment and audio um, from the radio conversation. Mm. I had the I had the I handed Mike a couple sheets of paper and it's basically all of our radio conversation from the race and and uh, Russell did this for me and he said some of it's highlighted. It is. <clears throat> so um, anyways, I thought you might want to have some fun with that. We had a uh, <clears throat> we went to run the Xfinity race. We talked about that. Y'all know we went and ran Bristol. If you listen to the past shows, and I was super damn nervous about it, and. Uh, I don't think I really been. I'm really sure about this comment I'm about to make, but I don't believe I've ever been more nervous in my life as I was before qualifying. And I would, I, I mean, literally, people were looking at me, going, "You're freaking nervous!" Like it was written all over me. I mm. couldn't hide it. Well, you it was said so, it. So it was so bad, I couldn't hide it. I mean, it was usually you can hide it, right? You usually walk around and act like nothing's nothing's a matter. But for some reason, I was just really nervous. <clears throat> And then when I went out there to practice, so we get a 20-minute practice, and I'm going to go out there and run about 20 laps. Right away, the very first couple of corners, I was like, I have made a massive freaking mistake. Mm. This is harder than I ever thought it could be. And this, like, <clears throat> all we had was, all I had to base it off of was the sim. I couldn't remember. I mean, I can, I know Bristol, and I know how to get around the racetrack, but I can't remember physically driving around the track i mean it was six seven years ago and so we went off in the corner for the first lap and i'm like holy cow this is this is no this ain't child's play this is we ain't mess we ain't playing here this ain't a pickup game and i ran lap after lap after lap and the car wasn't comfortable and i wasn't comfortable and i was everything's happening too fast and i was not able you know I've said this for years. Every time you go to Bristol, even when I was a full-time racer, it takes about 30 or 40 laps for you to sort of start processing how fast things are happening. you got to catch up to how quickly things are coming at you. And it's really only like that at Bristol because of the, you know, you're running 15-second laps around a half-mile racetrack. And so <clears throat> I wasn't going to get 40 laps. And so what? if we ran 20, I still finished practice going – I don't have a damn clue. I'm not even close to being able to say I'm comfortable entering the corner. I might be overdriving it. I might be underdriving it. I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've pushed the car to its limit on corner exit yet. I haven't found it. Right. I haven't gotten to the limit. I haven't found. Haven't been able to go around the corner and go. Got everything. I got it all right there on that lap. So I felt like I was still way off, and totally and and not real sure where how much further I could go to push the limit before a problem, right? Before losing traction. And then I got to go qualify. I mean, I've got to go out first. I, I was a little nervous for you on that mm. part. Knowing how nervous you were yeah. when I saw that you had to go out first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so luckily <laughs> for me, I don't know if they do this every week, but right before, so we've got the track all rubbered up. There's rubber everywhere. There's marbles and all kinds of stuff all over the track. Well, lucky for me, they sent the pace trucks out there, and the pace trucks ran like five fast laps, like a couple of pace trucks running right in the groove really quickly around the track. And they were inadvertently picking up rubber and picking up imperfections and marbles and kind of cleaning the racetrack. And so <clears throat> I thought, man, that's kind of good. That's going to help me. I was watching them out the front of the windshield. I'm strapped in, waiting on them to wave me out onto the track, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And so the nervous tension crescendoed to a like almost nauseating like puke moment. Let me finish. All right. Don't interrupt. This. I'm not. And so I'm sitting in the car, strapped in, and my spotter Joey's on the radio and he's like, about a minute before they send you. And you're sitting there. And there's a there's an official standing at the at the left front corner of the car, and you're watching his hands because he's gonna he's gonna give you a wave or a, some signal right to crank it up. And he goes 45 seconds, bud. Probably gonna send you about 45 seconds. And so he's counting down, and I'm sitting there thinking in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm about to pull out here. It's gonna take me about 
45 seconds to run this qualifying run. So literally in one minute, I'm going to be over. This will be over. In one minute. And I was, I was, it was, I was kind of take, I was kind of like taken aback by how nervous I was in that moment. And then in one minute, I was going to be completely on the other side of that extreme relief. Yeah. And, uh, but maybe disappointed, maybe happy, whatever, right? With the result. <clears throat> but either way, it was going to be over. And I'm a, I don't, dude, I don't know how, how to not get that way. I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I wasn't that nerve, nervous or anxiety ridden. <clears throat> but, and you, I don't know, you'd think, you, you know, I th- you'd think that it would be easier and easier the older you get. But, and I think that that's why, you know, when I ask, when I joke, I joke about it on social media. Who do you, you know, who do you want to, what retired driver do you want to see come back and run a one off Xfinity race? And I tease Jeff Burton and I tease Jeff Gordon. But I honestly think that while there are probably some good reasons why they don't want to come back and do that, one big reason is they're afraid of not succeeding. Hmm. There's probably some of that fear of not being good enough. And so and and I think that's what I'm dealing with in that moment. Getting right before I go out and qualify, I I ran some practice laps. I was totally over my head and in over my head no way else to describe it the practice laps were were like trying to read a foreign language they made nothing made sense and now i'm going to go out there and try to run as fast as i can possibly go right to the limit of the car and hope that i get a good enough lap that'll get me into the field i was two spots away from missing the race at martinsville on time when i qualified for that race a couple of years ago a, just a, a couple couple tenths or hundredths of a thousandth and I would have been out of that race. That would have been embarrassing as hell. Yeah. That's what you're worried about. Explain <clears throat> what you mean by it didn't make sense. Like, were, were your times that far off? No. All right, explain yourself. Times were then. great. Okay, I but, mean, times were fine. What didn't were, make sense? It's happening too fast, and I don't, I'm not comfortable. I don't feel the car. I don't feel the grip. I'm going in the corner and not doing – everything feels – uh, like I, I, you go when a, you know you, when you drive a good lap, you go down the corner and it hooks up and you hammer the gas and you you drive in the car on top of the racetrack and sliding around and you're like I'm getting it all out there I'm getting everything I can get right here. In practice, I was um, not able to get to that. I needed a lot more time to be able to l- work up to that. Right. And I, and practice was over, and I wasn't even halfway there. That's fair. You didn't have enough time to get comfortable. No. And and so it, when you, you don't have a in between, it's either a one or a ten. Ten being the most comfortable, one being uncomfortable. You don't usually have a five or six. If it's a five or six, you feel like a one. <clears throat> yeah. And so you didn't get enough time. So I was going to ask you, Dale. You know what exactly is the source of the anxiety? And I think you did just answer it. Your fear is not succeeding. But your, I guess I'm wondering, is that in the back of your mind, are you afraid of the wreck? Are you afraid no. of not qualifying? Are you afraid of looking like a clown, Mike? Looking like just, just that's it. Mm. Looking like a damn loser. And I don't want to jump ahead, but we're talking to a guy that's led 47 laps of this race and had him covered. But, but, but we'll get to that in a second. I mean, this is this is <clears throat> quite interesting, man. Yeah. I mean, like you, you, you are buckled almost to a deb- uh, debilitating measure of anxiety going into these races and everyone around you thinks that you got a great car you're a great driver if you just had confidence in yourself man imagine the possibilities yeah, i know um i saw um i saw this clip of of uh <clears throat> i saw this clip um trying to think of it there was a it was a great quote that was uh basically so <clears throat> there's there's someone might say that there's two types of individuals 
you know, I don't want to get into an argument about athletes, but let's just use the word athletes for this. For this, there's two types. There's the types that fear failure or are driven by success. Right. Right. You're either either you you know as a as a <clears throat> you're either fearing failure or you're driven by success. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. It, we're maybe all to assume that every driver on the racetrack is running around there, and some are some are some are driven by the fear of failure. Some are driven by uh, the opportunity of success or winning. And this, uh, damn it, he was like one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Um, played for the Lakers. Uh, Magic Johnson. No. Kareem. No. Wilt. No. Kobe. 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 Kobe said, <clears throat> um, he said, I'm not either one of those. He said, uh, damn it, what was his quote? It was perfect. He said that he's there. Hell yeah. He said, I'm not driven by the fear of failure and I'm not driven by the, 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 the championship or the, uh, the opportunity to become the greatest of all time. He said, I'm there to learn every moment. In every moment, I'm just there to learn. I'm driven by trying to learn in that moment. And I thought, man, that's exactly where I was going wrong. <clears throat> you know, if, if you put yourself in a competitive situation, right, or even in any situation professionally, right, where you're trying to succeed. <clears throat> and I wonder if that was, I wonder if that would work in that moment if you could figure out a way to get yourself there instead of being me in that moment, I'm worried about failure. I'm driven by trying not to fail. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I think I race most of my career that way. Like, gosh, I hope I don't fail today. I hope I don't let, you know, I hope I don't disappoint me, myself, everyone else. <clears throat> that was dr- driving sort of emotion in my racing career. Some people are like, you know, some people might be thinking, you know, I'm here to win this race today and I want to win a hundred and I want to win 10 championships. That's what's driving me. But Kobe was like, Kobe said, I'm neither one of those. I'm there to learn in this moment. Hmm. And I faced, I, I went, I didn't, I didn't look at success or fearing failure. I was just thinking, what am I going to learn right now? What am I going to learn in this moment? And so I was thinking, man, okay, so, you go out there to qualify and just instead of worrying about making the field or worrying about failing, just wondering what you're going to learn in this qualifying lap. It sounds simple, don't don't it? Yeah, but I don't think you're wired how you're wired, yeah. right? I mean, like we can all wish we were somebody yeah. different. I'm sure we could do it every day if we, if we could. Yeah. But, but what's interesting about you I'm is not, that, I don't. I'm not comparing myself. I'm just trying to figure out a way so as I go forward – to try not to get so worked up. Yeah, because it sounds miserable, frankly. It is. It, it that part is. Yeah. Once you're through that, I mean, listen. When that qual- like I like I said, when that qualifying lap was over, especially after I realized it was going to be a good enough lap to get into the race, the rest of the day was fantastic. What sucked was the first half of the day, right? Waiting for practice, waiting for laps, realizing, oh, shit, we're in over our head. Oh, damn! Practice is over and we're not ready. We got to go qualify, and I don't have a damn clue how hard I can go. Right, right. So that part was all miserable. But I guess if you followed the philosophy that I I saw in that clip about you know that Kobe was talking about is you just think, man, what am I about? I'm just gonna what am I about to learn? Not you know not oh I'm over in over my head or damn I'm not ready or is this gonna go bad? Is this gonna go good? But what am I about to learn? What am I going to learn this in this next couple of laps of qualifying? What, yeah. is, what am I going to learn about myself and my car? And how, how am I going to get better? How will I be better on the other side of it? As well as you learn <clears throat> from failures. In fact, most people that succeed would, would have had a, you know, a pile of failures at which they were able to learn from and not do again, not yeah. replicate. That's part of failing. You, yeah. you, you hope to – that's what you teach your kids. I'm curious, though. Let me ask you a question. If it's this way, and this isn't just exclusive for Xfinity Series races. Yeah. It's also late model races. Oh, yeah. Florence was just a few weeks ago. We had the same conversation. We Why did. do you do it? Because the um, <clears throat> because once we got qualified, 
we had a totally i mean i had a, a an amazing experience like the i knew when i was clan and when I, I knew when i stepped down in that car and got i knew when i was getting in there for the race to start i'm like i'm gonna have fun this is going to be fun and honestly even in that moment when i'm getting ready to get in the car I didn't know whether we'd run good or not. The last couple of races, I finished 15th and 11th, and they weren't. we weren't fast. We weren't driving through the field in either one of those. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, man, you might have another night of just sort of being being there, not really being an, an, um, <clears throat> an impact on the race, having much of an impact on it. But that's fine. You're going to have fun. You're going to race laps at Bristol. I've missed racing laps at Bristol. I'm going to be in competition. I'm going to feel the rush and adrenaline of all that and running the bottom running the top and we're just going to ebb and flow and i was so excited about that so that's why that's why it's worth going through the the emotion gamut i mean yeah the annoyance of gauntlet is worrying about qualifying when i I, i'll say this too man i talked about this a lot um a couple things i think one thing that really helped me realized that I could go uh that I could get through that part of it the anxiety side of it is watching Chase Elliott and Briscoe and all these other drivers race other cars and things that maybe they're not familiar with right Chase Elliott went to run in the Chili Bowl a couple years ago and I mean that is a that is a the long the odds are long right that he's not going to make the main right the odds are super yeah, he's look i mean the guy's a great driver several people have tried the chili bowl lately that are just not it's that's not their discipline right and i really admired that i was like okay here's a young guy and he's willing to go somewhere where he thinks he's probably understands he might get his butt kicked and dang you know i just need to go have fun even if i get my ass kicked that's yeah. the way i looked at the late model stuff Okay. I badly, badly wanted to race late models for a long time. If I could go back and do this all over again, I'd have been racing late model stocks as much as I could over the last decade. I still don't run them as much as I think I should be. I think I still look back on what I'm doing now and think, man, I should have did more. But those seeing those guys like Chase Elliott, and, and I use him as an example, He's the only one I can really think of. But seeing him go do something where he knows he might not do it well and he's probably not going to win, but he's fine with that, really encouraged me uh, to just stop worrying about losing and being, being you know, you know, being, you know, not winning, going mm-hmm. into a late model stock race and just getting your ass kicked. It's okay. And so, you know, I think – you're still wanting, even though you you accept that, you still go into these races and this Xfinity race this past weekend, and you still can't help but allow yourself to get competitive, right, and and want to do well and not want to not want to fail. Um, <clears throat> that and the other side of that too is, is I've never been in that situation where I couldn't. There's a chance that I might not qualify for the race. I think that's I think that's plain. I lived my whole life locked in. That's right. Whether whether it's points provisionals whatever right um i was always gonna get my provision or or i was always gonna start the race mm-hmm. and i think in my cup career i mean i think there was a couple of weeks in the bud days where we might have taken a provisional i think there was one or two in there i don't know um but i'm, I'm just saying like i never i never had to i never had to go into the weekend going boy i gotta hit this lap or i'm going home but there was once when and, and, and you when you explain it it sounds just like that debilitating type of anxiety the very first race your countdown to e-day yeah and and, and but that you were not locked <laughs> in i'm gonna tell you i'm hearing everything you're saying dude and i was just like i think that that fear of missing the race because what i wanted to ask you and what I was wondering as you're talking was, how are you actually defining failure? Because clearly you can still have fun and not win. You can, you know, is it being competitive? What's competitive? You so, are going to be fine yeah. going 11th to 15th in yeah. a late model race. You can, And so you're like, I just don't want to get my butt kicked. But I think from everything I hear is that it's that 
that failure to miss the race. If you can just make the race, yeah. you'll find a way to have fun in it. Yeah. Um, there was, <clears throat> it was there was one other car there. So there. So if we didn't qualify in the top thirty-three, we were going to lose. Um, we were going to not make the race on owners points. Uh, we were the lowest car in owners points, right? So we would have been the odd man out. <clears throat> um, I think it was BJ McLeod was in the 53 car, and I don't know, they hit the wall or something in practice, but they withdrew right when qualifying was starting to begin. I didn't know that. I go out there, <laughs> my pants, <laughs> and we get we get done. I get out of the car, and they're like, oh, yeah, man, that, BJ and them were withdrew, so we would have made the race either way. And I was like, damn it, why did I have to sweat? Somebody could have told me that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it literally happened right as qualifying sure. was about to start. But, um, and they had, you know, I think there was another team in the field that if we give, if we would guarantee them our our purse money, they would have withdrawn. Ah. Um, but we didn't ask them to do that. Um, <clears throat> okay. You know, so, th- you know, there was, there's ways to sort of, pr- you know, there's ways to get ahead of it. And we just didn't, want to do it yeah that way one I guess. could yeah. argue you didn't even need to because i know i know you, but you, i would have just not had to worry there. god dang i wouldn't have to worry i don't get so miserable worrying about that i don't know how these guys do it yeah well I, dude i walk up to you know i've watched timmy hill do that on so many times in his career you know and landon castle right or you know, i've watched so many of these guys and never really understood what was going on inside their guts before qualifying or what they had to, you know, what they had to deal with on a regular weekly basis mm-hmm. in terms of, man, I'm going to the racetrack and I, I might go home. Every, you know, having to do that multiple times in a car that's not good. Yeah, well, that, but that's their, world, that's their reality, though. I'm going to tell you something. If you grow up and you're not locked in, in in every race, and you grow up knowing that you don't have the best equipment, and I'm not even just talking about racing, like yeah. in life. like the, the fact of the matter is is that um, you know hungry dogs are going to scrap, and they're going to – they know their reality, yeah. and the fact they got to fight for every meal. But they're, not, they're certainly not worried about failure. Yeah. And, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I try to I try to – I try to find comparisons with myself. Like, you know, like when we, you know, you and I are building a media company and we're going to come up with some ideas that are just going to flop, right? We're going to come up with ideas as long as we keep doing it. We're going to come up with ideas that we think are great and then they're just not going to be great. Yeah. And I know that I'm okay with that because I know that if you got to swing, yeah. you got to make swings and I'm okay with missing the ball completely. I know, but there's but, a difference. Okay, keep going then. So in, pot, in, in building a media company, I know I haven't spent my entire life thinking that I'm the greatest at that. Okay. So as and as a race, you know, growing up as a race car driver, I believe that I am, I am the best. That's right. You 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 would say that. Right. That's you true. have to believe it. And yep. so even now, I know people say, "Man, you don't have confidence in yourself." I got confidence in me, right? Mm. But it's like when you put the whole puzzle together, what happens? Right? When you put the car in there and me and the crew and the new and the spotter and the limited practice and the track and all of that all the pieces come together is it going to be good and so when i fail in a race car i you know it's like man i don't want to face a reality i don't want to face that reality of 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 just not being good in a car because all my life i've believed that i'm great yeah i'm great at it and um you know even when i go out there and run mid-pack i feel like i'm you know i don't go well i'm just a mid-pack driver i'm just an okay driver there's a reason for it but it's not because you forgot how to drive right Right. yeah so yeah everything else in life Mm. i'm okay having failures because i don't proclaim to be the greatest at it or great at it right um <clears throat> but when you really grow up in your whole being and whole world is i'm a race car driver right you yeah. just you you don't you don't ever want to and maybe that's part of why these guys won't come do a one-off it's like man they don't they don't want to have to face a reality of like uh possibly 
having lost that talent, right, or lost that that incredible attribute. You bring up you, you bring up a fantastic point. Is that I tell Jeff, I I joke him with him a little bit, but honestly, man, I would love to see Jeff Burton drive a race in a good car one more time. And Jeff Gordon, I would I would wow. love to see Jeff Gordon race one more time, right? Yeah. At Bristol in an Xfinity car or something like that. Somewhere he was happy to be there, right? I think they absolutely would do great. And they, they're just like me in, in like selling themselves short, like, oh I'm over the hill or I ain't got you know, I I'm I I don't think you know, they're just worried about measuring up or being good enough. Experience the thrill of the racetrack like you're in the driver's seat with DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on your favorite racers and feel the rush of every pass, pit stop, and victory like never before. Right now, new customers can turn five bucks into two hundred instantly in bonus bets. Bet five on anything to score big, no matter what goes down on the racetrack. Check out Dirty Modo every Thursday where they will handicap the field and they'll recommend bets to watch for the upcoming race. With props, parlays, and more, you'll have bets to follow all race long. The racing action doesn't stop till the checkered flag drops. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and join with code DJD. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. That's code DJD only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Or being judged, you're bringing up a being fantastic judged. point. Judged on stuff that's not even in your control. Because yeah. you drivers, listen, when you go, you know, uh, how Dale do yesterday, or how Jeff Gordon do yesterday, like whatever it was, sucked. He sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, you know, I mean, like you guys, uh, the expectations that are placed on you, whether they're self-inflicted or yeah. or whether it's everything around you, you there are. You do bear the brunt of the outcome, good or bad. Yeah. Good or bad. Yeah. Um, Jeff it, Gordon went to Indianapolis road course about two years ago to race a Porsche and a very competitive race. So Jeff Gordon, in, in the last you know 24 months, has been in a race car and competed his heart out, right? At, at, it wasn't no damn uh, vintage laid back you know gentlemen's right. club it, it a senior this was series. yeah he yeah. was out there and he he was a he was a bunch of bunch of kids in there racing hard young guys trying to make their way and he's like man i worked my guts out to run a half a second slower than the guys that were up front mm. wow and so i think that too when you have those experiences like i went to race late model stocks right the last year yep and bear you know qualifying outside the top 20 in a in a 30 or 40 car field at Florence I'm like what the hell you know so that you'll have those experiences and go go damn man maybe this is maybe this sports passed me by just a bit you know yeah. and I and 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 you and so I think something like Jeff's experience he, every time I joke with Jeff he mentions his his experience in that Porsche at Indy he's like shoot man I I ain't got I can't do it anymore I ain't got it anymore well, you know, I would probably tend to agree with him after my cup, the couple of uh, Xfinity, Xfinity races I ran over the last two years because I didn't feel like I had it anymore running 15th and 11th. But <laughs> this past weekend, it's like, hey, you know, when things are right and you prepare and you, the car's good and you really go into it with your whole heart uh, and give it everything you got, uh, you still got enough in the tank to go out there and, and do well. And that was a, you know, it's funny, is 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 upside down, is, is behind and unprepared and, and over my head as I failed in practice, it was the complete, absolute opposite in the race. In the race, I got those 40 laps I needed. Yep. Everything slowed down. Everything started to make sense. I was connected to the car. I'm connected to, the car's connected to the track. It's all making sense. 